What if you could build your own AI worker and actually trust it? Can creators finally stop AI from training on their work? And can AI-powered art deliver an emotional punch? All that and more is coming up right now. So we're all hearing a lot about AI agents. What is it? How do I use it? How do I build one? What can it do for me? Well, OpenAI has just dropped a 34-page guide, a complete instructional tutorial to teach you how to build and use your own autonomous AI systems. These guides cover best practices for designing AI agents, different prompting techniques and when to use each one, as well as step-by-step -step processes for building single agents. So here you can see there's only three things. The name of the agents, so this is a weather agent, instructions, aka the system prompt, and the tools the AI agent can call. It covers topics like tool selection, instruction design, and safe deployment practices. The point of this free PDF is to take you beyond thinking about simple automation and shift your mindset towards full AI workflows. Because today's early agents are tomorrow's whole job workflows. So get knowledgeable, get studied up, and let me know what you make. Neuralink's third brain chip recipient, a guy named Bradford Smith, he's got ALS and he just posted a video revealing that he's now editing his own videos and narrating his content using only his thoughts powered by AI. This is the first video edited with the Neuralink and maybe the first edited with a BCI. This is my old voice narrating this video cloned by AI from recordings before I lost my voice. I have ALS, a really weird disease that kills the motor neurons that control my muscles, but not affecting my mind. We have created a chat app that uses AI to listen to the conversation and gives me options to say in response. So everybody watching this, you're creative, right? So imagine losing your ability to create and then getting it back through the power of your own thoughts. I recently went to Brad's home and spoke with him and his family to ask what life has been like after receiving this remarkable device. I'll publish that video soon because this is an exciting time for Neuralink as they're ramping up their surgeries here in Phoenix, Arizona, Miami, Florida, and Toronto, Canada. The team is hard at work, ramping up their surgeries and aspire to implant these devices in billions of people. This is a huge achievement that shows what AI is capable of in returning autonomy, creativity, and communication to those that historically have been sidelined. The, the long-term goal, which sounds a little esoteric, is to mitigate the, uh, the risk of, of uh, the civiliza civilizational risk of AI uh, by having a, a sort of closer symbiosis between uh, human intelligence and digital intelligence. So this story might be the most stark and vivid reminder we've got yet that AI is not about productivity, it's about human empowerment. And read all about this story at Wednesdayi.com right now. In the United States, the White House collected public feedback on upcoming AI regulations and found that there is a battle brewing around copyright privacy, and international trade. So the White House just heard from thousands of people, tech startups, artists, creators, everyday people. This is all relevant because the AI rules of the future are being written right now. The order establishes a White House task force on AI education and requests schools and tech companies to develop classroom resources together. The order gives agencies 90 to 180 days to implement programs focused on AI literacy. It directs the Departments of Education, Labor, and Agriculture to prioritize teacher training and student exposure to AI concepts. And whatever regulation emerges out of this could either accelerate the growth of AI or stop it dead in its tracks. Either way, you don't want to be surprised when it hits, so you're going to want to get caught up with this story if you're at all interested in AI. The links are on the Wednesday I page right now. In the world of copyright, AI has just proposed a metadata standard that would allow creators to tag images for permission when it comes to AI model training. It's kind of like robots.txt for search engines on websites. These new metadata tags could tell AI models, hey, train on me or hey, get lost. Content credentials is going to be pushed a lot more with Adobe now that they've integrated it both into Photoshop and as of 2025, Lightroom. And we can get recognized for our work no matter where it goes. So now with Adobe pushing content credentials, the big question becomes, are creatives actually going to use it 
and are they going to feel safe in it actually protecting their artwork? And for the AI art is stealing crowd, this should be good news for you because now artists, brands, and creators might get control over their digital rights. And if you're an artist, this is a chance for you to protect your stuff before the AI wave takes it away. Get all the details in the full story with the link on Wednesday.com. And from the Art for Good department, the World Wildlife Fund in Denmark has just used AI tools for an ad campaign to bring awareness to the environmental cost of everyday consumer goods. So these images were created with simple chat GPT prompts. And this campaign highlights how the buying choices we make impact natural wildlife habitats. This campaign is a powerful reminder that AI can be used not just for business, but for storytelling that can create ethical action. And for creative professionals, it's a case study in how to use AI for meaningful impact. We've got a link to the coverage on famous campaigns, gets deep into the whole thing. You can check it out on Wednesdayi.com. And this past weekend was the latest edition of the Gen 48 filmmaking competition. So my feed has been flooded for days now with everybody showing off their entries and they're all so good. We can only pick a few to show you and highlight here. First up is Ship Happens by Mean Orange Cat. I don't like the look of this. You have fishnapped my bride, cat. Get him. He wants to eat us. I will have my revenge. On guard! Come on, dude, we don't really need to do this. Plus, it's kind of tricky with the AI. You think I'm gonna fall for that one? Kickflip! <laughs> what? Oh, come now. All right, pal, let's get you home. I should have known there was no... Next up, this one's packed with emotion and breathtaking visuals. It's the story of Division by The Real Robot. gifted them a struggle. And from division, competition was born. A breath into their lungs. You've sparked greed, warfare, and enslavement. Yes, and from greed came ambition. And next up, we're highlighting this beautiful animated undersea adventure. This is The Sea That Dreamed by Roxanne Ducharme. When wind touched the glass, visions poured through. Fields in bloom, skies of blue, laughter, running, falling rain. All the things he had never known and all the colors he had never seen. Carrying the jar through the endless blue, wind realized he wasn't just seeing others' memories. And then I don't know, it's kind of funny, it's kind of bizarre. Either way, it's awesome. It's Special Delivery by Solo Films. <laughs> of course. And that's the show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching. We here at Wednesday Eye, we strive every week to bring you the biggest stories from the world of AI in a concise and entertaining package. Now, if you want to get it first, then get over to the WednesdayEye.com site, enter your email address, sign up for the newsletter, and you're going to get all the news first. You're going to know all of this before you even see me talk about it on the show. Now, if you're making something cool in AI or you got a tip, something we got to talk about on the show, send us the link. We're on X, Instagram, LinkedIn. Leave a comment on the YouTube or wherever you're watching this. Send in an email or better yet, wait around till the next Gen 48 competition and make a video about it. Can't wait to cover it and can't wait to see you next week. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Fire!